Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm coming to you from my bedroom. I have a big project going on today. A big thanks to Brooklyn Inn for sponsoring today's video. I also wanna show you several ways around the house that I am going to be prepping for a easier December for myself because of what is coming and um, also in my kitchen. I have some really good ideas to just make life simpler for Christmas. I have something coming up in December and it's not exactly a project, not quite ready to tell you about it, but because of it, I know that my time to get ready for the holidays is very, very limited. So I'm spending a few days prepping my house for Christmas, for just a busy month of December, because I have this thing happening in December. And we're gonna start today by getting the bedroom ready. Our bedroom is a place I can come, even some of my older kids come, and you're able to shut the door and it's like a sanctuary. So it is really important that the bedroom is a wonderful place and we're gonna make it a little more wonderful. Okay, here's the before. I have not made my bed yet. You can see we're shoving a lot of stuff into a small space. And we have some bed pieces that we just have never built. So I think that's, a, that's part of the project here is putting our real bed together. When we moved here, we had two queen, uh, king mattresses. One we had out here and then one was from our other house that we were living in. And so we stacked them and it, it was just way too soft. So we ended up getting that bottom mattress out that was, it was a soft mattress anyway. And we have some box springs under there but we still haven't, because of all that whole fiasco, we still haven't just made a priority of building the bed again. So we have, Mike is here to help, but what do you call it? Headboard? No, the headboard's in the basement. I think that's the baseboard. But it'll be nice to like have our real bed back. <laughs> so we're going to start by doing that. Mike is getting a game on here <laughs> because he and Solo are going to be working for a minute on this project. Noelle's helping me strip the bed down. It's always good to have a football game on while you're working, I guess. I don't know. I wouldn't know. If you watched my channel recently, you may have seen us trying to just work on this bedroom. Your own bedroom can be like the last thing that you work on. And so I, I've really been trying to put some effort in here. The last month or two, I moved the furniture around, you may have seen. And I've just been working on getting some, just making it a nicer place. Nebraska, what are we going to do? <laughs> Not First too bad. <laughs> I'm just happy they're doing this project. <laughs> it was hit the fan. You know, let's push this to the bathroom. Fun. All right, this has been our situation, the box springs, but one is bigger than the other, so we had wood even Are under that. Really? Yeah. How did that even happen? I don't know. <laughs> we must have gotten rid of no. one that was match, a match. No. We had a couple that were ruined in the move. So here's the wide open space. We are shoving all our clothes into this closet, and we had a much bigger closet in our other house. So. As a result, I have another closet space in the bathroom, but Solo does not, so he has a suitcase there that has some of his clothes we haven't fit in. But having the bed up on a bed frame will allow us to put some like under the bed oh, storage good. containers. Good job. <laughs> and he'll be able to put some clothes under there. So that'll help to give us a little more space. My back massagers will also be able to hide under the bed, which is nice. <laughs> All right, we are almost done. The bed has ironically taken as long as the game took. <laughs> We are finally done. It feels so good to have our bed made, like headboard and everything. And best of all, I got some new sheets. Not only new sheets, but a new duvet cover and new sheets. And these are luxury sheets. <laughs> I have never had luxury sheets before. We got Brooklyn in bedding and it is so very nice. Very comfortable, long lasting. I got the luxury set or Lux set. It is a fitted sheet, a top sheet, pillowcases, a duvet cover, and then extra pillowcases. The Lux Hardcore Bundle is Brooklyn is most popular bundle set. They're 480 thread count. So they're a little bit warmer than their classic set, but perfect for year round comfort and really nice for us in the winter. I picked out the cream color and it looks so nice. I just really wanted something very simple, a clean, simple look. They're also made out of sateen, which makes them feel very buttery soft. It really feels like I'm finally adulting at a whole new level. And it's like the best hotels we've ever stayed at. Just never thought I could duplicate that at home. These Brooklyn and sheets are on sale right now for Black Friday. If you are looking to upgrade your home or you're looking for a really wonderful gift to give someone else, 
I highly recommend these sheets. Brooklinen is having their Black Friday Cyber Monday sale right now where you can get 25% off their bundles and other products. A little hack that I'd like to recommend is getting one of their hardcore bundles. That will save you up to 35% because it'll stack the bundle savings with the sale discount. This is a really good time to snag your favorites and get a bundle before they sell out because they do sell out fast around the holiday season. They do have a lot of great colors to choose from. I was looking for this clean, simple look, but honestly, it was really hard to decide because there were so many good colors to choose from and you can mix and match. So you can do, if you do get a bundle, you can get a different duvet color than the sheets. You can mix and match it all. If you're watching this video after the sale is over, don't worry because you can still get a discount. You can use my code our tribe of many to get $20 off of any order over $100. Okay, another day, another prepping project. I want to obviously get our house decorated for Christmas, but we're doing very, very, very simple this year because we just do not have room for much stuff. Um, as you can see today, I have pushed the table all the way to the end just to, for the need for space. Last year, we were living in two places. We had our house in town that we decorated fairly normal. And then we got our one Christmas tree is like on its last leg. We tie it together. You know how it is. When you have a fake Christmas tree, it came from my grandma. I think it came from my parents and my grandma. So it's gotten a lot of years. So I knew we needed another tree anyway. So we went ahead and set that one up but we got a different one for out here. We got, I think it's a Home Depot viral tree. Actually, it's just a big tree with so many lights. If you hear screaming, it is children having too much fun. So we have this tree for out here and we literally just put lights on it out here because we were just coming out on the weekends, just wanted to have a Christmas tree and enjoy it. It was wonderful, I love it. So this year we have the Christmas stuff from the other house, plus we have this new tree here, but we just don't have room. I don't have space in my mind for any extra clutter. Obviously we want it to feel like Christmas. Um, so I think we're just gonna set up that one big tree here again and not worry about all our other Christmas decorations until we have our new house that we're going to build one of these days. As you can see, here is where I shoved the table all the way over. It kind of covers that homeschool stuff because I didn't want the little ones getting it out all the time today. Um, the last few days we had the table all the way to that side, which is nice, kind of blocked off a space for the little ones to play and gave us a bigger schoolroom area. We're just trying to make ways to make it feel like we have space to move around okay 10 kids at home right now and we're 1700 square feet I know a lot of people live in smaller spaces but with the cold weather where um, that this week particularly we had rain for several days it was dark cold wet my kids went outside and they're like we're not staying out long and they would come back in and so it gave me a little taste of what the dead of winter <laughs> might feel like and I'm like yeah we need to just not add too much to our space right now because we need the space so I think I'm gonna have to move couches I love moving furniture so I'm not complaining about that at all moving furniture is my favorite hobby <laughs> I think we're gonna end up having it I gotta find a spot for that chair not sure how what maybe in the garage but that's gonna have to be the Christmas tree corner I have hair out right now that I'm, I'm braiding Tori's hair which is another way I'm prepping for a busy month ahead these two things the weights and the keyboard get used constantly I think that's where we ended up putting the tree last year at the bottom of the stairs we tried it in a couple spots we have a basket of books and a basket of blankets that get used a lot here so I think that's my only choice. We definitely need as much couch space as possible because we use all of our couches all of the time. And as you can see, I took the end off of that and put it over there a month or and a half ago maybe. And that's worked well just to make it feel more spacious and less blocked off. So we're gonna move that. I think I have to move it because the tree is very, very big and this space is probably not big enough. So we'll switch because this end, this is the end this is the L of this couch. Uh, and the chair together are a little shorter. So I'm not sure what I'll do with these things. Maybe they can kind of fit under the tree. You see we like puzzles a lot. We got a puzzle going there. We have a puzzle we just finished here. that has some missing pieces. Our life right now is a puzzle. <laughs> it's like a real life puzzle. How are we gonna do it all? How are we gonna fit it all in? Plus, do you think we are not normal people? Uh, 
we've moved this side less, and it's very obvious. We might find some missing remotes over here. Well, we were moving it, Solo and I were just joking. Well, we could just leave it like this. <laughs> and I don't know, we're gonna try it maybe, just see. It might not last long. Um, How but it, what does it feel, what does it feel as if it's more cozy and you're all together than it did before? I'm not sure. Well, everyone will be faithful. That's it, we're having a movie night. It could help save our carpet. This, this has been a challenge. It, the, it's hard to live in a very small space with light carpet. We did not install this carpet. It was here when we got here. We are hoping to add wood flooring all of this soon. But, you know, you live with what you got. It's okay. We could put a rug down. <laughs> oh, he found a hiding spot. That's cute. <laughs> anyway, there's a lot of room for the tree. A lot of room for the baskets. The food will well, be easier what, what to stay out. Day, if we left it like the, this, we could just put the tree in the middle. Just move it in the middle. <laughs> that means we'll have to put When we have company, you know, yeah, she's, uh, she's like, I'll yeah, try it out. <laughs> when we have company, they'll have to walk all the way around. We'll just jump over. No, no jumping over. New rule. Never jump over that couch. If you jump over that couch, you get an automatic job. And I've got a list of them. I'll just put them on the, the list on the fridge. <laughs> okay, you guys ready for the next part? What's no, the next what? part? Putting up the magnificent tree. Oh. All that furniture moving <laughs> made me hot. So I've come out to help Eli with uh, uh, animal project. But even the animals are ready for December. We got a heater under his water. He has an automatic feeder, by the way, which is awesome. We put huge bags of food into here, and then only he can push it open. Great Pyrenees have some food issues, like they don't want other people eating their food. Other dogs. Other animals, rather. Hi, Gable. This is a heated pad for him, but he sleeps mostly on that mattress that was not supposed to be his. <laughs> the cats are out there in an old dog house, and it also has a couple heaters on the middle section, and so they're sleeping in there and happy to be warm. Check out our cows. I can't believe we have cows still. Do you see them? They're laying down right now. All so happy. <laughs> They'll get up once I start moving over there. Our newer batch of chickens have not been um, going to the middle coop where we want all the chickens for the winter because we ha want to save the little coop they were in for when we have new babies or we need to separate, separate out some roosters for a couple weeks before butchering or whatever. We just want to save it for when we need to separate out any chickens. They weren't going in well. So for two days, we're keeping all the chickens in their same coop, and it helps the older ones too because they've been laying eggs everywhere around the property and we need them to just lay in their coop. So we turned off their automatic door for now. For two days, they're just staying in their coop, but we do let the ducks out. Everybody's making a lot of noise. Hi guys. Oh, there's one chicken that we couldn't get in the other. <laughs> the guineas aren't with them, which is always good for them to be reminded where their home is. They have slept a lot of the summer or a lot of the fall in trees. So everybody kind of knows where to go now by dark. Um, this is their last day. It feels like torture. I hate keeping them in there because they're not used to it. They never, since they're little, we just let them free range all day. But um, it's necessary because we need the little ones to be able to get in by themselves at night to have that instinct and um, to the right coop. And we need the eggs all in this spot. Okay, I went in and got Eli. They seem so tortured in there. We decided to give up. They only got a day and a half in their coop. That's enough, right? <laughs> Hopefully. They were getting close to going in on their own. A lot of them were, so maybe that's enough. Gable's waiting for Eli. So we have a couple of cat pads that are warmering pads. That's where we keep our bird waters. We have another one Eli's bringing up from the middle coop for when they were locked in prison. And then over here, we have our electric fencing stuff and our girls. Hi girls, they're getting to know us. 
Lenny Lou is not quite as friendly with us as Minnie Mae here. But, you know, takes a little time. She's side-eyeing me. <laughs> so they have, uh, their water is obviously right there. And we've given him a huge space over here. And we're going to make it, yeah? Oh, no, but I'll get it tonight. I'll get it this afternoon. Got to put a battery back in the door. So they have this long, large area all the way over to the trees over there. And then we're going to expand it here. It goes up. But we're going to expand it out to the that brush line there. Just to give them a little more grass. They've been grazing a lot. We're also just learning them and trying to make sure they're getting enough food. Um, we give them some alfalfa scoops every day. And then our farmer friend who plows our, or bales up our alfalfa field, he brought us uh, just a grass hay bale that we're gonna give him full access to. So we'll have that too, but we're gonna kind of keep them sometimes down in this field to eat. And then I'll show you where we have them. We've got the shelter all ready for them. You got a lot? Six. Okay, six eggs and a feather. We're certainly new to this cow thing. We don't know exactly what we're doing all the time. Sometimes they make us nervous, to be honest, like when they're running. Can't tell if they're playful or upset. <laughs> not getting enough food, or they just want to talk. But, you know, when you're not used to 900 pound animals, it's a learning curve, but we're learning. We're learning them. Come on, girls. So here's another view of all the pasture they have right now, which is a lot. And then we set them up with this area using some of the electric fencing we had. That's a more permanent area um, that we can close them into. So we can close them down there if we're working up here and just don't want them up here. Or we can close this here. And this is kind of their home base. We have a shelter up here, but we don't have a water line up here. So getting water up here is a lot more complicated, a lot more effort. Uh, so we're just letting them have both spaces, but it's nice to have options. If we just need to rearrange, when we rearrange the fencing later today, when Solo does that, he'll he'll get them up here and then be able to work out there without worrying about them running. We have had them run when we were moving them over to this side. and <laughs> It was an adventure, let me tell you. We learned a lot about cows that day. Luca, Micah, Solo, and I. So here's their shelter with their new hay bale. So they're ready for the winter. This is some of the hay that fell out of it. Um, but they have this shelter. It's open to the wrong side. It's open to the north, which our wind comes from the north, but we got some great trees here. And we'll probably add a wall over there so they can munch on this. Their minerals and salts are in here, and they have a nice place to hang. It wouldn't be a great place to milk, but we'll work on that eventually. Even out here has a cover, and that's our storage there. So they have this whole yard area if we keep them up here some. We have water and electricity very close here, but the water is not connected, so we may connect to that um, and just be able to leave a water up here for them so that their home base has everything they need. But like I said, for now, if we brought them up here, we wouldn't leave them for long, so. It's fine getting them all ready for the winter in a way that we feel like we can manage very well. Yeah, we've learned a lot and I think they're happy. I don't think they're as comfortable with me as I'd like them to be, but I try to just Stand with them, talk to them, and pet them for quite a while every day. Right, girls? Hi, Minnie. Minnie lets me. Uh, of course, I'm bugging them while they're eating right now, but Minnie le tolerates me a little more than Lenny. Lenny tolerated me in the beginning, but not so much now. I don't know why. You guys are good girls. Yes, you are. Lenny gets to running sometimes and jump running, and if I'm in her area, it scares me, and I get out quickly. I don't know if it should scare me. I'm sure it's just playful, but she's, she's a big girl. And I don't want to be trampled. Okay, let's get back to the house prepping stuff. I do love showing you the animals because it's so new to us. It's so fun, exciting. Last night we ate our home pasture-raised chickens for dinner. We, we ate our own eggs for breakfast this morning. And to imagine that one day we'll be... The, the wind! One day we'll be uh, drinking our own milk, our own cheese that we made, all the, all the dairy products, and maybe even from their babies have some meat that we raised on our own is just, it's unbelievable. It's awesome. See, we still have a big bay of alfalfa too that we give them, we supplement for them just so their stomachs stay used to that, I guess. We're clearly experts, right? <laughs> but your comments have been so encouraging that there is really one best way to learn and that is to start. I always love hearing from all of you who are like, you're doing the right thing, just gotta start and you'll learn as you go. Okay, here's the back view of that couch situation. 
course the table has moved way over right now. I don't know how we'll feel if this will last long. And we forgot to put the ottoman over there too. All right, Sola brought the bag in for me. I guess there were a few more things than just the tree. Is this one mine? But not much. Not much. So we're gonna see, this bag was awesome for storing it, but this tree specifically, you're supposed to not have to fluff, so I'm hoping that that is real. That is real, I know that one. You don't have to fluff it? Nope. That's why we bought it. <laughs> what are we gonna do with Judas? We're gonna hang it because... I remember last Christmas, we were looking at a stocking side to, like, to decorate. <laughs> Got a tree skirt last year at a clearance at the very end of the season. Okay, there's no been no fluffing at all. I'm gonna prove it because he'll put the next piece in. You just gotta clip him in right because it's pre-lit. Oh yeah, it's opposite. <laughs> but look at how it comes out really fluffed. <laughs> we should leave it like that. So. What's opposite? Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> It's not a Charlie Brown tree. There's got to be a name for that. So no worries. You'll easily figure out if you got it stacked right or not. <laughs> you can only go wrong with two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the bottom and the top are very obvious, and there's four pieces. So Oh, look at that. Oh, I'm loving it. So we really just the, stick it together and turn it on. The real deal Could it be, be that simple? I love simple. <laughs> Uh, the, the lights hold up. Oh, now, that gosh. would be a real mess. I'm gonna start praying right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's working. It's all working. All right, my skirt that I bought at the end of the season was not the right size. It should have been taller, but you know what? I'm not going for perfection. <laughs> I don't even care right now. I could use this for our other tree next year and maybe find at the end of the season, find a different one. There was a little tree and a little angel in there. There was our Christmas books, which we love, and that little tree that we put in the mirror, and we some stockings. To go the tree. Oh yeah, oh he found the remote. Do I want to go without I don't want to put the ornaments? I found yes, I really do, it. we'll see if they let me. We have a few ornaments that a really kind viewer sent us from Australia, but we didn't get them till right after Christmas last year, so we had them set aside in our pantry, so we'll put those on for sure, but. We may just save all the other stuff because just less things. Simple Christmas. Oh my gosh! <laughs> what do you think, Seth? I get that. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, next thing I'm doing to prep for Christmas and December. Do you see this beautiful puzzle? Yes, it has missing pieces. The theme of my year is we're just gonna make it work. But it's this beautiful picture and I am going to use Ignore my hair stuff, I'm doing Tori's hair. But I've had this thing for a long time. My mom bought it for us years ago as an advent calendar and it has these nice little sized drawers and I'm going to divide the puzzle up by sections in 24 ways for the advent calendar so they'll open up. We're just making it work here, <laughs> just barely <laughs> because this is the first year ever I've opened it up and found that we, um, a bunch of these numbers fell off and I am missing one of them for sure that I cannot find. I think it's just one, but we still have the drawer for it. So we're just gonna put it, glue it back together and I'm gonna divide this puzzle up. This one? This one. That's where you put it together. Right, well, it's not perfect. <laughs> it's not a perfect plan, but this is my plan. Maybe, maybe at Christmas we'll get another puzzle and we'll put it together right around Christmas and as we're taking it apart, we'll load up the advent calendar for the next year. Is that a good plan? Those drawers are really fun. We've done things like I put different activities in there like go look at lights tonight or play a game around the table or something like that and then when they open them up we do that game but sometimes you just don't want to do anything <laughs> and so I've done that for several years. We tried candy but then if you do like little M&Ms everybody gets one maybe two candies when you got 11 children so that's not ideal either. Um, but we're gonna try the puzzle thing. I think it'll be fun, even though we know we're missing a few this year, we'll get, like I said, a new one at the end of the year and have, this is the imperfect simple Christmas. <laughs> it's the memories that count though, guys. It's the memories. The only rough part about my little plan is that we have to have a puzzle out all the time for a month, but we're pretty good at doing puzzles and just putting stuff on top of them at the table, placemats. Tori's fixing it up for me. Okay, it's all ready to go. I think number 19 is in Solo's truck because we just moved it over in a box in the back of his truck. Has to be there. 
Otherwise, I'll let you guys know how this works out and if we end up doing it again next year. Uh, I saved something special from the middle for the 24th. Doesn't she look comfortable? Aww. Okay. <laughs> so, can you try clapping? Just clap. Wow. Yeah. Can you try again? Try again. It only works when Tori's standing there. <laughs> okay. But it didn't work. Can you try again? Uh, it's it's wow. <laughs> so the other thing I'm going to do to prepare for a very busy December is braid Tori's hair. I've already done a lot of it. She's asked for it to be braided. It just gives her a really quick mornings because she does her hair herself. Destiny also asked, which saves me time. So I already did Destiny's. These braids just buy us a lot of time, so I'm gonna finish it up tonight. She has an event tonight. She wants it done before her, so we have a deadline. But it will last her for six to eight weeks, so it's totally worth it. Another day of prepping my house for our crazy December ahead. Uh, update, loving the sheets. They are so comfortable. And uh, we have already gotten some under the bed storage things and our room is just improving every day. So my grand plan for the next foreseeable future is every day when I have a little extra time, I'm getting in the kitchen and I'm making a soup. And so today I'm gonna make one of my very favorite soups, one you may not have thought about before. It is butternut squash soup. Maybe you do know you have your own recipe. This one is so very good. I'll show you how I make it. I'm gonna try a simple shortcut today by not having butternut squash, but having frozen butternut squash. So I won't have to do all that chopping, which is definitely what takes the longest of it by far. And I'm just gonna throw a soup together. My plan is taco soups, chilies, whatever kind of easy soup I can throw together and put in the fridge or freeze just to make this next month easier on days it is. We need it, you know? <laughs> I just assume that there are gonna be days that we need a dinner that is already prepared. All right, I've got a new apron on. Bell's so I can show you. A viewer sent me this, it's super cute, and it's gonna keep my clothes very clean. Of course, these soups are gonna be beyond our regular dinner so that we have a dinner for another night. Tonight, we are working on Thanksgiving leftovers, and as you can see, they have exploded on my very small counter. <laughs> And we got some Legos exploding over there. This meal is one of my kids' very favorite and we only make it around the holidays so it kind of keeps it extra special. So I've got eight tablespoons of butter in there. Of course, you could half this recipe. We double, usually triple everything. So eight ounces of butter it is and we are going to saute this very large yellow onion that I chopped up. While your onion is sauteing, you're going to want to peel in cube six cups of butternut squash, which I find is one large butternut squash or sometimes one and a half smaller ones. Or you can be like me and buy frozen peel and cubed and just throw it in like this. Six cups would be the half size. I'm throwing in like 12. I'm going to add six cups of chicken broth. Actually, one of them is turkey, one of them is chicken. It all works. If it doesn't cover it completely, you can add some water or more broth. I'm just gonna add a little water to make sure it's fully covered. Then with my Lego background noise, I'm gonna add one teaspoon of marjoram. I don't know if I say that right, but I say it like it's spelled. And half, half, yeah, half a teaspoon of black pepper and just a little sprinkle of cayenne pepper. So I usually bring this to a boil and then let it uh, cook for about 20 minutes until the butternut squash is soft, but I think it'll probably go a lot faster because it's small, smaller pieces than I normally chop because it was frozen. So uh, I'll come back to you and show you the last couple steps. It's very simple. We can make ham soup. No, potato cheese, soup. Cheese, ham, potato. Oh the yeah. The bell beat us. <laughs> I'm making a lot of extra soups this month. I love soups. I fully approve. If I'm making double dinners in one soup, Put one aside. What was that one soup? Taco soup, chili, potato soup. What was that one soup we had like last Christmas? All I could think is it tasted like oranges, but not like oranges. Like the color orange. Like fall. It tasted it like tastes fall. Harvesty. <laughs> While we're waiting for the soup to boil. Okay, I went out while well, I was gonna boil to take care of my animals quick. And it hasn't even boiled and they're they're cooked. So 
it's close. I'm just gonna let it boil quick and then move on. Cause I think it needs that for the spices. I don't know. It just does it so much faster when they're small frozen cubes. Okay, it boiled a little. I turned it off. Time for the next wonderful step. We have two leftover blocks of cream cheese from some Thanksgiving festivities. Those are going in. I'm going to put a half recipe in the description box below so that most normal people would want to make. All right, meet my best friend, one of them, the immersion blender. I started making this soup when my oldest, my 19 year old was a baby and I had to put this all in a blender. It was a pain. Immersion blenders change lives. All right, at this point I salted to taste. I tried it, it has a foam on the top that I don't normally get with the non-frozen. And the non-frozen is usually a little brighter orange, but otherwise it is exactly the same. Um, and I think it's worth the hack of all the time saved. Although I'll probably still do it the other way with fresh chopped up butternut squash sometimes. You know how you find a recipe and eventually it just becomes yours because you keep changing it? Well, the original recipe I started with had double the amount of cream cheese. So I would have had four blocks of cream cheese for the amount I made. And I dropped that years ago because it just was not necessary. It was not needed for, it made it so thick and creamy, but actually with the frozen stuff, I think I could use a little extra cream cheese. So I may add one more block here. You know, you adjust. I learned, I've learned over the years to adjust to whatever. I'm going to go ahead and put the soup aside. It's going to save us one night. Don't you love my Lego background music? <laughs> it will definitely be a time saver one night this week. And I'll be happy I did it. I hope that every night when I'm making dinner, I can get a soup going on the stove at the same time to save myself in this month of December. Thank you guys so much for watching today. Don't forget to check out Brooke Linen for that sale. Use my code Tribe of Many to get $20 off any order over $100 or that Black Friday Cyber Monday sale that's going on till the 29th. It's definitely worth checking out. Thank you guys and we'll talk to you soon, bye. Thank you.